Hey guys, so since a lot of you are new, I've actually done a bunch of, well not a bunch, like a handful of videos on sustainability since I've been on my own personal journey with that for about three years now. I gave up fast fashion for good, so completely cold turkey just stopped buying fast fashion. It's actually been one year, like a full year since I've bought any fast fashion besides like a handful of band merch items. 99% of my wardrobe now is all secondhand or thrifted, so if you ever see me wearing something in a video and you like it and wanna know where it's from, nine times out of 10, it's probably thrifted. Anyway, I haven't given an update on my sustainability journey because nothing is, else has really changed. I will link my videos on it though down below if you haven't seen my journey yet. But anyways, I miss talking about it because it is something that I am super, super passionate about still to this day and I'm still trying to make little efforts here and there in my day-to-day -day life. And you know, I'm still passionate about it. So I thought it was time that we talk about greenwashing. But first, I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different types of classes from editing videos and photos on your phone to creative arts to life advice. They really have everything. Skillshare makes it really convenient to accomplish your goals with short classes for your busy lifestyle. And it's affordable compared to to in-person classes and workshops. I recently discovered the class Simple Productivity, How to Accomplish More with Less by Greg McCown. He goes over the concept of essentialism and prioritizing the important things in life instead of the most productive things in life, which I love that concept. I actually did a whole video on why you should stop being productive all the time. I will link it. Skillshare is of course giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 500 people who click the link in my description below to help fuel your creativity. After that, it's only around 10 a month. So it's no secret that sustainability and thrifting and natural eco-friendly products have been increasing in popularity, I'd say in the last five to 10 years. They've always kind of been around for dozens of years, but lately it's been a little bit more trendy to be more eco-conscious. And capitalism has a grip on that concept, let me tell you. So companies are recognizing their consumers' desire to purchase things that are better, not only for the environment, but also themselves. Thus, greenwashing enters the chat. So if you've never heard heard of greenwashing, here's a nice little definition for you. Greenwashing is the process of conveying a false impression or providing misleading information about how a company's products are more environmentally sound. Greenwashing is considered an unsubstantiated claim to deceive consumers into believing that a company's products are environmentally friendly. So not all companies who claim to be natural or environmentally friendly are guilty of greenwashing, of course, but it is a fact that many, many companies exaggerate their claims to mislead their customers. It's also not that the companies aren't making an effort because when it comes to sustainability, any effort is worthwhile. It's just that they're doing the absolute bare minimum in order to be able to make these claims for profit purposes only and in the process are exploiting lots of people, animals, and the environment. Companies are now capitalizing on the manipulation of consumers because they know that generally people are more drawn to these green products. And of course, why would they lie about something like that? A lot of times it's very popular and reputable companies that are going to trick you into thinking that their products or clothes or whatever are actually good for you and the environment. One of the worst things about this fact is that 66% of people are willing to spend more money on something that they believe is to be better for the environment. Thus, the companies are not only manipulating you to buy their products, they're manipulating you to spend more money than you normally would because you think it's green. There are actually multiple ways that a company will use greenwashing. For example, they will take a cost saving cut like not using plastic shrink wrap on a product and they will claim that it's for eco-friendly purposes but in reality it was just because it saves them money. It is technically better for the environment to use less packaging but their intention behind it is misleading. And you might be wondering well who cares what their intention was as long as they aren't using the plastic what does it matter? Well generally this can lead you to think that the company is more green than it actually is and thus you trust that company with your money and would rather spend money on that company's products. So even though they're technically doing what they claim, they're still manipulating you so you buy their products. You might then overlook companies that are actually making an effort and actually making a difference because this company has better marketing. So let's talk about some of the biggest culprits. You think I'm really just going to sit here and talk about all this greenwashing without giving some examples? And yes, I'm calling these companies out by name. Now, of course, I had this whole video planned out. And then last night as I was watching YouTube, I got an ad. 
and I was like, I have to talk about that. So that's gonna be the first company we're talking about and that's Sally Hansen. Even a nail polish company is jumping on this greenwashing bandwagon. Now I have not looked into their actual ingredient list. So I don't have the whole ad, I just took screenshots, but it is this uh, good, kind, pure, Sally Hansen line. It says vegan on it, plant-based. It says 30 shades inspired by nature. That's a good buzzword in there for greenwashing. Nature, you wanna feel like it's natural. Terms like vegan and plant-based are also becoming so trendy right now that companies will put it on anything even if they haven't changed anything, right? It's like always been plant-based, but now it's trendy to be vegan as a brand. So they're gonna put that on their label because they were always vegan, like nothing changed. <laughs> it's not necessarily bad. I like that it's labeled this so it's easy for consumers to know what to buy. I've seen meat companies put plant-based on hamburger patties because half of the ingredients are fake meat and plant-based, whereas the other half is real meat misleading much. So one of the most recent greenwashing incidents that I have come across that I think is still currently going on or by the time this video goes up it's probably ended but it is based in the UK and that is Primark. Primark in case you're not aware is a fast fashion company based in the UK and if you're unsure about fast fashion I have done a whole video on it a year ago I will link it. And thanks to the lovely Amy Lee on Twitter this popped up on my timeline and I thought now is a perfect time to make my video on greenwashing. So the original tweet from Primark is this Introducing our first ever pop-up store at Box Park Shoreditch. You can exclusively shop our new wellness range, which features products made from either organic cotton, recycled materials, or sustainable materials. Hashtag Primark Cares. Wow, there are so many buzzwords used here that are huge red flags to me. We got wellness, organic, recycled, sustainable, and then to end the tweet with hashtag Primark Cares. Brilliant. I hope that the people who they're trying to reach can see through this because when a company uses four buzzwords like this in a single 240 character tweet, that's a red flag. All of these terms are very commonly used within greenwashing. They're clearly overstating what this line actually is because you shouldn't have to use four greenwashing terms within one tweet to get your point across. Also, why do so many sustainable brands look like this? Like, where's the color? Where's the shape? I, I know this is loungewear, but can it not be cute? No black, you don't know, black fabric, what's going on? Okay. So then Amy's tweet reads, it's great that recycled materials are being used, but who made these items? They can't possibly be sustainably sourced materials if they're retailing for the same price as your usual garments. Hashtag Primark Cares, aka, Primark just heard about greenwashing and love it. So Primark is 100% a fast fashion company, much like Forever 21. Their goal is to produce as many clothing items as possible, sell them as quickly as possible for an affordable price so people buy more of it and they don't care who they exploit in this process. For them to now create a separate wellness line for profit's sake and not even take a look in the mirror in regards to their current manufacturing practices leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Sure, they may be actually using part partially recycled and organic materials, but how are they manufacturing them? Because I know the cost for manufacturing sustainably and ethically, that would go up a bit. And I'm not sure what price point they're selling these clothes at, but given that it's Primark, I guarantee it's not like $50 for a set or something, you know? They use the word sustainable too, by the way. They did say sustainable materials, so not sustainable practices, but we also care about the people making the clothes too, not just the materials being used. And it is more likely than not that they're still using these exploitative practices in order to make these clothes. And this is actually called a hidden trade-off, so they appear more sustainable. They also have been completely radio silent on Twitter in regards to being questioned about how they are making these sustainable garments. But they are replying to every other tweet that is just praise. So another red flag when a company is greenwashing is that they aren't completely transparent about their sustainability practices with specific examples because a company that is truly green would be more than happy to do so. And usually they do this on their own. They will have actual evidence of their sustainable practices instead of waiting for hundreds of people to ask about it. So the fact that Primark is still remaining silent after being asked by hundreds of people about it 
should tell you that they're probably just greenwashing. I mean, if they have the means to create a sustainable recycled clothing line, why wouldn't they just apply that to their existing practices of their general Primark line. Another company that pretends to be eco-conscious, even though they are in fact one of the worst fast fashion companies out there, H&M. Now they have a program called H&M Conscious where you donate your old textiles and in return, they will give you money, a coupon, so you'll spend money in their stores. That's a huge red flag to me. It's supposed to be like a reward for trading in your textiles and then they claim that they will take those old textiles and recycle them to make new clothes. They even have a lovely little tagline for a more sustainable fashion future. Uh -huh. They would love for you to think that they're actually repurposing your clothing, but in reality, guess how much of that clothing actually gets recycled and turned into new clothing? 0.1%. The other 99.9% .9 of clothing that they get through this method, they ship off to a third world country to deal with it. And let me tell you, they don't have the means to deal with that much textile waste. I'm sorry, but third world countries should not be our garbage cans. I love what this article says about H&M, never once taking ownership over the problem they created, but rather took the problem and turned it into an opportunity to sell more clothes. Don't you think it is a little ironic that they're encouraging you to donate your clothes to them so you can get a coupon to spend money in their store. And unfortunately, fast fashion companies aren't the only culprits in greenwashing. Many companies that actually claim to be sustainable that might appear to be sustainable to the consumer aren't necessarily so transparent about specifics, which is not what you want from a sustainable company. So for example, Everlane. Everlane is known to be a sustainable fashion company, right? They claim to have radical transparency in regards to their production, but when you actually look into it, they only show the factory where their clothing is made, but they don't go into specifics about the farm practices or the worker's pay or anything like that. What's more disturbing is they declined to comment on its farmers' practices with cashmere and cotton. They also do not disclose their supplier code of conduct or sustainability policies and don't follow organic and fair trade standards. So even the company that we were led to believe aren't actually fast fashion companies, they aren't necessarily participating in the best sustainable practices either. If you're wondering how to tell if a company or a clothing brand specifically is practicing greenwashing or if they're genuinely sustainable, I highly recommend the app Good On You. It's what I use to type in a clothing brand and it'll give you different levels of sustainability so you can choose which things are the most important to you and whether or not it's rated well. So let's move on from fashion companies, shall we? And let's talk about other products. Boxed water. What's so bad about that? Well, it's good for the environment since it's in a cardboard box and it'll break down in a landfill, right? Wrong. First of all, Note the trendy packaging. It's very catching, it's grabbing, it's hipster. You wanna buy it, it says box water is better. Except it's not necessarily better. You're still creating waste at the end of the day. This is a one-time use item and it's lined with plastic, so it cannot be recycled at all and will probably still take decades to break down in a landfill. When a product is made up of more than one material and cannot be separated, it cannot be recycled. So technically, bottled water, plastic bottled water is easier to recycle cycle because it's all plastic than boxed water, which is cardboard and plastic. So obviously just switch to a reusable water bottle. Stop buying one-time use water. Okay, next, household products. One of the biggest culprits when it comes to greenwashing and probably one of the easiest ones to spot when it comes to greenwashing. They're one of the worst categories of greenwashing because no one is regulating them. They can make any kind of claim that they want. When they use the term non-toxic, it could still very well have toxic ingredients in there. Simple green, all purpose cleaner. Simple and green. Two buzzwords in greenwashing. They use the word simple to make you think that there's only a few ingredients in there and green to make you think that it's all natural. But this does indeed contain toxic ingredients. Sunlight green clean laundry soap. They use the word sunlight because, you know, it's a reference to nature. So it makes you think it's natural. And then just green clean. Sometimes greenwashing is literally just putting the word green in your product. So this company claims it includes plant-based ingredients, but when the CBC tested the product, 38% of the product still contained petrochemicals. So they're not lying. It does have plant-based ingredients in it. Is it more than water? 
Who's to say? Your first instinct when you read something is plant-based, you think that all the ingredients within it are plant-based, but realistically it's probably a majority of ingredients are plant-based and water, because that's plant-based, and the rest are made up of toxic chemicals. Raid Earth Blends Bug Spray. It's an all natural bug killer, and it says it contains the insecticide derived from the chrysanthemum flower, but is that the only insecticide within this product? Also, I wanna point out that just because it's natural and came from the earth does not make it good for you. Many plants and natural ingredients are still toxic to humans. So here's how to tell if a company is actually greenwashing. Firstly, look for vague, unspecified claims that are not backed up by any facts, no matter how much digging you do on their website. Like I said, the companies that are truly green and sustainable will be very upfront about it and are happy to give you like minute specifics that don't even probably make sense to you. Also, a company will overdo it with the nature vibes. They will make it green and fresh, have pictures of grass or, you know, the sun and nature. They do that too much, probably greenwashing. Overstating their claims, like what Primark did in their tweet using four whole buzzwords in a very short tweet, that's greenwashing for you. They're overselling the idea because they're probably exaggerating their actual claims. Just have a healthy skepticism when it comes to looking at green products or sustainable products, even when it comes to clothing as well, because we are within this era where sustainability is trendy. So of course, every company is going to want to put their best face forward and appear more sustainable than they actually are. There are a hundred examples I could give for greenwashing when it comes to products. If you wanna give more specific specifics and more examples in the comments. I would love to hear it. Let's call all the companies out that greenwash because it's a horrible thing. And let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.